everybody. In this video, I'm going to be showing you a review of this planner here. It's by a company called Chu Yu Culture, and it's their 2020 one day one page grid diary in the B6 size. Chu Yu Culture is a company based out of Taiwan, and they sell a lot of stationery items and they sell houseware items. I got this planner from them through their storefront on another website, and that website's called Pinkoi. Being that both Chu Yu Culture and Pinkoi are based in Taiwan, they use Chinese. I can't understand Chinese and I can't read Chinese. 99% of the time, I had to rely on Google Translate. Now, Pinkoi has an English language interface on their website, so that made it easier to buy from Pinkoi as opposed to going through Chuyu Culture's website directly. Throughout this planner, it uses Chinese in some of the pages, so I also ran that through Google Translate. If you happen to know Chinese and you notice that I said something materially wrong or incorrect, then please let me know. And just to give you an example, if I go onto the Pinkoi website and I look up this planner, I'm going to read to you what it says so originally it's in Chinese, and then it was automatically translated into English. So what this says here is 2020 B6 slash 32K log slash square first one page batch one paper log handbook slash handwritten calendar. So a lot of their items are going to be like this. It's kind of hard to decipher. So that's why I kind of decided to condense it. And I condensed it down to the 2020 one day one page grid diary. If I flip to the first page of this planner, actually, you can see it says 2020 and it says diary. So that's why I chose the word diary because diary could also stand in for agenda. It could stand in for journal or it can stand in for a log. So I just picked diary because that's what it says on the front here. When you get this planner, it comes in three different parts. And it's, it's, it's all been bundled together. It consists of the notebook here, which is the planner. It consists of the cover, and it consists of another cover on top of it, which is a clear plastic PVC style cover. I think because I got it in a bundle, it was cheaper. But you can actually get all three of these things separately. That means the planner, the cover, and this plastic cover separately. I'm going to start with the cover first. And I'm going to discuss these two things at the same time. The inside cover is made out of cloth. And it's this one is in a navy blue color with some kind of floral design on it. So it's really pretty. If you didn't like this color, there are five other styles. So there are six other styles available uh, that are available in this three-part bundle. If you were to get the planner separately, you could actually do that too. And I'm going to just take this out for one second. You can see here that this planner is just, the cover is just made out of plain cardboard. If you were to get this as a standalone planner, the cover is a little bit more fancy. It comes in a green and it comes in a pink. I think that just because this was meant to go inside a cover that they didn't bother to make it fancier. They just left it this plain cardboard. The cover here has a big, big side pocket which was used to slide in the, the notebook. It has three card pockets on the front. And then the back, it just has the big side pocket. In terms of these card pockets, they're all the same height, even though they're kind of staggered on top of each other. And they can fit a credit card or a gift card. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is the size of a gift card. You can see all of them stick out at the same height. Also, if you were to take all any three of these and you were to move it around, there's actually quite a lot of room. It's just that this plastic is in the way, but it can you can move it around here so you can fit something bigger than just a gift card. It won't fit in this way though. At the back here, I hope you've seen it earlier, 
are two bookmarks. One is a corally pink and one is a brown. And it comes up from the top here. I generally don't like to use the bookmarks, but it's good to know that this has it. Lastly, for this cover, it's got two pen loops. You can, what you can do is, well, you can put a pen inside the first one, and you can put the pen inside the second one. That's probably a better view. Or you can put one pen inside both loops. By doing that, you keep the two sides of the notebook closed together. Now let's get into the planner itself. You can notice that at the beginning there are two end papers. And I found this interesting just because most notebooks only have one end paper. Basically, if you look at any other, or a lot of other notebooks at least, you'll notice that either the first or the second page, it will flap over differently because of the way that the paper here is glued onto the cover. By gluing it down, it's used to bind the paper to the cover. You can see here when I open this, you can see a strip of uh, the paper, a strip of this page, which actually has been glued down. It's right here, and it's the same on the back. That's what causes this to flap over awkwardly. When you get to the second page, it's fine. It flaps over normally, and when you get to the third page, which is the start of the planner paper, it flips over perfectly fine too. I think that's why they have two end papers, because if you look at any other notebook, you can see that the, either the first or the second page flaps over differently. Because they have two like this, then it's guaranteed that when you get to the third page, it will lay flat open like this, which I like. So now I'm going to get into the meat of this planner. As I've said before, it's the Tomoe River paper. Tomoe River paper is a special type of paper and it originated in Japan. They, it's fountain pen friendly and it's watercolor friendly. Now Tomoe River paper has two different qualities or two different weights. The weight is determined by something called GSM. There is the 52 GSM and the 68 GSM that's available with this Tomoe River paper. The 52 GSM tends to be lighter and it tends to be thinner, while the 68 GSM is a little bit thicker. So this is the 68 GSM Tomoe River paper. It's also in the white color paper of this Tomoe River paper. So I'm going to show you here, this is a, another Tomoe River Notebook by Nanami Paper, and it's their cafe note. It uses the white Tomoe River paper as well, so same as this, but it's in the lighter quality. It's the 52 GSM. You can see when you compare the colors here that they're both the same color. It's This notebook is, when you flip it over, it's quite got a, quite a crinkly feel to it. It makes a crinkly sound, and a lot of people like that sound. Whereas this one being the thicker version doesn't do that as much. I would like to mention the ink used in this planner. It's all using the same color, and it's a kind of grayish green color. It reminds me of if, let's say you take a photo on your phone and you run it through a filter, and the filter, the, the sepia filter, I think it's the same with this. It's gray, but then they ran it through some kind of sepia filter. It's not as stark as black. If you compare it with this grid here on the Nanami notebook, this is what, it's a cooler gray. And whereas this is more of a greeny, warm gray, and there's a definite difference. So I tend to like this color, but this one is okay as well. Another thing about Tomoe River paper is that it ghosts. So by ghosting, I mean if you write on one side of the page and you flip over to look at the back, you would be able to see what's showing uh, on the other side. I think you can see definitely see it here. If I were to lift this page up, 
you would see that actually it's a blank page with the 2020 diary printed on it. But if I laid it down on top of another piece of paper, you can see that actually the what's showing up here is the what was printed on this page behind it. So that's what ghosting is. And this happens through all of the notebooks. It happens to all of Tomoe River paper. That's a known qual that's a known characteristic of the paper. It doesn't indicate the quality. It's supposed to be like that. So next I'm going to flip into this second page here. And it's all in Chinese. I'm not going to run it through Google Translate. But just in summary, this is just a catalog of the different planner layouts and planner options that Chuyu Culture offers. The one that I'm showing you right now is the one down here. It's their one day, one page, and it's got a grid. It's also got a monthly view on two pages. So here there's a monthly calendar on two pages. And then these are the daily pages. You can go through and look through these yourself. For example, if I wanted a daily page like this, but I didn't like the grid, there's also a version that's in lined version. So it comes with lined paper in, instead of grid paper. This is the lined version I'm talking about. They even have a version of this where they don't have it in a bound notebook. They have it in loose leaf. So you can punch it or it may be punched already, but you can definitely put it into a ring binder. And that's this version. Then they have a week on pa two pages. They have two days on one page. So you can go through all of these 12. One thing I will note though, is that not all of them use this, the Tomoe River paper. This one is the only one that uses Tomoe River paper. And I'm not even sure if that's something that's new for this year or it's something that's been there the whole time. Because when I looked at the planners for some of these, it says that they use imported paper. And this is the only one I've seen that uses Tomoe River paper. Next, we get to the next page, which is uh, a year at a glance. So this is for the current 2020 year, and that's for the next year. And it's uh, just a calendar, so you can see all the dates all at once. At the bottom, they have in Chinese for each year, a list of all the public holidays or the national holidays that occur in Taiwan. If you wanted to put in your own dates, I think that's a good place to do it. You can print or type it out and then just tape over this if you don't need to see the Chinese. In this page, we get to some note pages. I ran this through Google Translate, so I'm going to read to you what it says. Okay, let's start at the top. What this says is career planning, plan to achieve career goals in stages. That's I think that this page is meant to be used for your planning your long-term goals. It could be career or it could be anything. It could be your life goals, your health goals, your financial goals. It doesn't have to be just your career or work goal. If you look at the top here, it, there's a table with uh, four columns. The top header says project and it says achieving rate. So if you have different goals, and you have areas of goals like financial health and so on, then you can put them on each the top of each column here. The first row here says future goal. Once you have your areas, your goal areas, then you would write down what is the actual goal that you want to accomplish in this row. The second row says should be reached this year. You could take your goal that you wrote down here and you could break it down into a smaller sub goal, which you think that you can accomplish within one year of 2020. The next one, two, three, the next four rows are pretty much the same. I'm gonna read what they say. This says one year later, three years later, five years later, and 10 years later. Then on each row, there's a little blank space, and that's for you to put your age. If I were 100 years old in 2020, then I would put 101 here because one year after 2020, I would be 101. I 
that's probably a, a way for you to look at it, your goal that you wrote down here in the long term. How far would you have gotten along with that goal by the end of this year? One year later, three years later, five years later, and 10 years later. I'm not sure I'm going to use this for this purpose. And if I don't, then it's this is just a page with ta a table on it. So you can use it for whatever you want. You can ignore the writing on it and use it however you like. That's the same with this page. This page, it says yearly schedule here. There are three columns here and four rows. So there's 12 in total. And on the top, the header of each box, it says the month. This is the first month. So fe January, February, March, and so on. Then in each box, there are six check boxes. You could use that for uh, as a list, something important that stands out to you in January and February and so on. Next, we get to the monthly view. This is a month on two pages. It's got a Monday start. On Saturday and Sunday, the headers are shaded in to, I guess, to designate the fact that it's a weekend. And this is darker than this. On the left, you've got the month and the year in question. And underneath that, there's a sidebar. The sidebar, I hope you can see, is made up of a grid. And it's a three millimeter grid. At the bottom, there's also another spot for you to write notes and so on. And it's just a blank area here. For each day of the month, you start off with the day of the month on the top left. And then on the top right, it shows the day of the month according to the lunar calendar. So that's different from the Gregorian calendar. And I personally wouldn't use any of these dates in the lunar calendar except to know when the Chinese New Year was or the Lunar New Year was. And in, the, and in 2020, that happens to fall on January 25th. Going back to this, since this is January 1st, the New Year's Day, it says that it says that here in Chinese, and it's actually shaded in. I think that the bigger public holidays are sh shaded in here just to signify that it's more important. Because here you have another public holiday in Taiwan and here and here, but these are not shaded in. Whereas this is shaded in the New Year's Day and the Chinese New Year's Day, which is a four day holiday. I'm going to, they're all to use the same layout, but I'm going to flip to March here because you can see that March is one of those months in the year where the month spans over six weeks instead of five. Here January has five rows, but March has six rows. You can see how they do that. And it's by cutting into the bank blank space at the bottom of the page. If you find that you've run out of space here, then you can also use the space here at the top, which is blank. So these monthly views goes on until December 2020, and then they give you an extra month for the next year, January 2021. And this can be used for some future planning. Next, we get to the daily pages. So this takes up the meat of the planner. It's got 366 pages of this. And it's got a square grid, which is a four millimeter square grid. So I'll start at the top. Here it shows the month in the numerical format and in the uh, typed out in English. It's also duplicated on the side here with a little tab. If you flip to every single month, you'll see that it the tab shows up, but it cascades down the page. And the reason for that is when you close the planner and you look at the side of the notebook like this, it makes it easier for you to flip to a certain month in the year. So if I were to pick the middle one, this should be June. Yeah. Okay. Next, on the top of this page, we have the day of the month. And then we have the weekday. And that's followed by the lunar calendar date. On the right, we have the public holiday, if there is any. So these two days both are public holidays, and that's why it's here. But otherwise, it would be blank. There's another thing here, and it's a number. This actually represents the day of the year. 
Uh, I wouldn't refer to May 27th as the 148th day of the year. I'm going to be using this as a bullet journal and this number would be a good way to represent a page number. Next we'll get onto the grid. It's four millimeter grid. On the side here is a timeline and it's a 24 hour timeline where each grid box or grid square is one hour. So it starts at six here and then it goes down to four and you have two boxes underneath so five and six. So 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. When it comes to a timeline I would need more space within let's say 8 to 6 p.m. because there are more things happening for me during those hours and then I wouldn't be able to fit all the things I wanted to put in in one square. But it's good to have it here I suppose in case you do use the entire 24 hours and you don't want to have to write it down each time. Otherwise if it's for me I would just ignore it and not refer to it at all. You can also see when you're looking at this timeline here that it consists of it takes up two squares and then once you get to the second square there's a darker line going down here just to differentiate between the grid of the timeline and then the black grid that you can write on. Once you get past the 24 hours then it becomes the line disappears. The grid doesn't extend all the way down to the bottom of the page. There's like a blank space here as well and here and that's because on the left here there's a monthly calendar and the two days that's on this spread, first and second, that's highlighted here. I personally wouldn't use this. If I wanted to see a monthly calendar I could just flip to this or I could flip to the year at a glance. And once we get to the bottom of the page you'll see that there's some text here. There's English and Chinese and on this side there's Japanese and Chinese. So it's like that on every single of the daily pages. What I think this is good for is if I look at the English this Chinese here is the equivalent of this question here in English. If you were English and you were trying to learn Chinese or Mandarin then this is a good way for you to understand some basic phrases. And if you were Taiwanese and you were trying to learn English, then again, that would be a good way for you to learn how to say something in English. And all of these are not quotes really, they're just phrases, common things you would say in the course of a conversation with someone. For example, here it says, keep the change, which I guess you would use when you're shopping. Will that be cash or card? Also when shopping. One last thing I want to mention about the daily pages is that on some of the more important public holidays, if you remember that those important public holidays were shaded in on the monthly view, they're also located here on the top right, but then they're also printed out here as a kind of watermark on top of the grid or under the grid. So you can see here. By the way, you'll notice that all of these pages because of the way that they're bound, they're stitch bound, they all pretty much lie flat. You may have to press down a little bit, but in general, it lays flat. Once you get to December 31st, you flip over and then the back of this notebook or planner is the notes pages. The first note page you'll see here is blank on the top. There's two of them. It's blank at the top and then there's a kind of quadrille style graph paper at the bottom. Next we get to two blank pages and you can see I've already written onto this blank page and this is my pen test. So I, when I use my planner, I was using this as my planner and a bullet journal. I tend to use just gel pens or black ink. So the first, the first part here is the pens that I would generally use inside my planner or and my bullet journal. The first one is the Uniball Signo and it's a gel pen. I also ran it through the highlighter. This happens to be the Zebra Mild Liner which is at the bottom here and this ink smudges under the Tomoe River paper a little bit. You can see here. The next two pens here are fine liners and this one is the Sakura Pigma Micron and the Uni Pin pen and it's in the dark gray color. So both of these 
don't don't smudge under a highlighter. But the thing is, because they're fine liners, I don't like to write in them for long periods of time. I just basically use it for drawing or uh, writing headers because it's I just can't uh, deal with the tip. The next pen here is the fountain pen. It's the P Pilot Metropolitan in the fine nib. If I'm not using a black gel pen like this Uniball pen, I'll be using this Pilot pen for most of my planning. This is in the fine nib. And it does smudge under Tomoe River paper with a highlighter. But I think that's more to do with the ink instead of the uh, paper. Next, we move on to another fine liner. Uh, this one is not the same as these two fine liners here. It's water-based, so it also smudges, and I, I didn't bother to highlight it. But I do have a set of these fine liners from Desserts, and uh, I use them just to add a little bit of color. Next, we get to the fountain pen inks, and I picked the three fountain pen inks, which I think will show off the qualities of the Tomoe River paper. And I am not sure how to do this, but I can try to bring it up closer to the camera. But the first ink here on the list is the Blackstone Barrier Reef Blue. And this is a medium blue with a red sheen. So I'm going to tilt the paper around, see if I can get that sheen to show up on the camera. But I'm not sure if you can... Oh, here. I think you can see that the, the sheen shows up quite nicely on the Tomoe River paper. The next ink in this list is the J. Herban ink in the color Bleu Ocean. And it's just a darker blue. But this one I used the thicker nib and it's actually supposed to have a golden shimmer. Again, I'm not sure if it's going to show up on camera. But in person, it's there. Lastly is another J. Herban ink and it's in the color Eclat de Saphir. So this is just a normal ink. It's a sapphire blue color and it does have a little bit of shading. I thought I'd show that off on this paper. Next we get into another note page and this is called the present list. I've decided to translate this so I'm going to read out to you what my translation says. The top of this header here it says it starts off with date, receiving, gift giving, object, gift content, memo and return gift. And this page has 27 rows in alternating colors and same on this side. So what you could do with this list, present the list, is just to list out all of the presents that you've given to someone or received during the year. On the first column you'd enter the date, you'd check off. Did you receive this or did you give it? This says object. I'm thinking object means the purpose of the gift. It could be a birthday, graduation gift and so on. This says gift content, which means what is the gift. And memo, you could put in some notes. Or if let's say if you were receiving a gift and you wanted to give send someone back a thank you note or a thank you gift, then you can write down whether or not you sent it and what it was that you sent. Next page is a map of the Taiwan High Speed Rail. I'm not going to translate into this into English. This is just shows the map. This shows the pay schedule timetable and then the list of the routes. On this side we have another two notes pages here for favorites. There are six sections here and six sections here for a total of 12. And at the top of each section you have a little header. This looks like it's a space to write your date. And then next to it you could write down whatever is your favorite. Then there are six icons here which you can use to categorize what this favorite item of yours is. So the first icon here looks like a movie icon. The second is a book. Third is music. Fourth is food or dining. Fifth is shopping. And the sixth is, I'm guessing it's miscellaneous because it's an icon of two hands clapping and I'm not sure what two hands clapping means. Now each section has four lines for you to write down it's what is your favorite and maybe why it's your favorite. And then at the bottom here, there this outline of 
five stars. So you can color those stars in and then give it a rating. The next page is a free list. And it's exactly that. It's just a lined page. There is a very faint line coming down here as to act as another column. And then there's check boxes all the way down the side of each line. And there are 24 lines on this side and 24 lines on this side. Next page, we get to the metro maps for two cities, Taipei and Kaohsiung. I wouldn't use this just because I'm not in Taiwan, but I think it's actually useful because in my own planner that I'm using this year, I print out the subway map for my own city and I put it, I paste it into my planner. When 2020 comes around, I think this is a good place for me to do that. I'll print out the subway map for my city and then I'll just take over this. It's good to have a space here that's dedicated for travel. The last two pages here is, well, one is the address section. So there are five different places for here for you to write names and addresses of people or companies. On the right side, we have some contact info space. It says personal note and you can write down your name, telephone number and email. This section has name and telephone number, and I forgot to translate this, but I, it kind of looks like a place where you could put an emergency contact of some sort, or your office contact. And lastly, there's some lines here for reminders. Also on the right here, there's a ruler. And that's the end of the planner. The last end paper here also has a little bit about Shuyu culture, a little blurb, and it's designed and manufactured in Taiwan, their address, telephone number, and so on. Overall, now that we've gone through the entire planner, here's what I think are the pros and cons. The pros are its basic features. It's 68 GSM paper, Tomoe River. It's got one day, one page. It's got a four millimeter grid. And I'm so excited about four millimeter grid. I don't know if I'm going to get into it in this video because I feel like this video is already very long, but I think the four millimeter grid works very, very well with the B6 size. I like that this planner has is quite minimal looking. It doesn't have too many notes pages, which you don't really use. I think the main ones that I wouldn't use is this catalog page and one of the transit pages, which is the railway map, this one. If I had to be Nick Picky, by the way, I, very, I don't understand why this transit page here is not grouped together with these two pages. There are two pages in between here, which are completely different from this and this. I like the overall design. I like the tabs here, which you can jump to each page. And there's a lot of space. I don't I don't think I'm ever going to run out of space on this planner. What are the cons? I'm going to get to the biggest cons in a second, and that's to do with the size. But some of the cons are because it's got a lot of pages. It's got 416 pages. It ends up being a little bit heavy, and also as you can see here it's quite chunky. You can see here I'm going to compare it with the Nanami Cafe Note again. But this uses, as a refresher, it uses the 52 GSM Tomori for paper. This uses 68. And this has 480 pages, while this has 416. So if I compare it, I'm going to push it down a little bit. If I compare it, this 480 page notebook is actually thinner than this 416 page notebook. So that gives you an idea of how thick this notebook is. Another con, I suppose, is the fact that it has some information as well that I wish weren't there, like this calendar at the bottom and the codes, which is nice but I wouldn't read those quotes much. And I wish also that the grid would extend down to the bottom of the page so I'd have more writing space. And I can write on this too, but it's just, I, I would like the grid there as well. 
Next, we're going to get into the biggest con of this notebook. And I left it to the end just because it's going, I'm going to get into quite a couple of numbers. The con is that this is not quite the B6 size. It says on the product listing for this item that it's in the B6 size. And it's also in the 32K size. But it's neither of those. It's actually wider and it's taller than B6 or 32K size. So I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to write down all of these sizes and then we'll just compare all of the numbers. So we'll start with the B6 size. When it comes to the B6 size, there's actually two different sizes in general when you're talking about B6. The first one is the ISO size, which is the, what I call the true B6 size. Now ISO stands for Inter Industrial Standards Organization. This is 125 by 176 millimeters. That's uh, width and that's height. This translates to about 5 by 7 inches. There is another B6 size, and that's the B6JIS size. JIS stands for Japanese Industrial Standard, and that is 128 by 182 millimeters. Compared to the true B6 size up here, it's a little bit wider and it's a little bit taller. It's actually more tall than it is wide. Next, we get to the 32K size. I mentioned this 32K size because Chuyu Culture lists this as a 32K size planner. And 32K is actually a standard they use in China for their notebooks or their paper sizes. When I look at Wikipedia, it says that it's 130 by 184 millimeters. This 32K size is closest to the B6JIS size because it's 2 millimeters wider and 2 millimeters taller. Next we're going to get into what is the size of this planner and this is the Chuyu B6. Okay. This is wider and taller than all three of this. 131 by 189 millimeters. Seeing as how actually most of the B6 notebooks I use is using this JIS standard if I compare this and this, it's three, sorry, I just knocked the camera, but it's, this 2U B6 planner is three millimeters wider than the B6 JIS, and it's seven millimeters taller than the B6 JIS. The seven millimeters is a big difference here, um, and it affects the fit of my covers, because besides getting just this cover, I have a couple of leather covers. I have travels notebooks and I have folios. And I knew before I bought this that this planner was going to be a lot taller than than the B6 JIS size. And that's a problem because a lot of the leather covers that I use are meant to fit either of these B6 sizes. It's not meant to fit 32K and it's not meant to fit this either. That's actually one of the reasons why I got this cover even though I have a lot of leather covers because I wasn't sure that they would fit. I have to say that it does fit in some of my leather traveler's notebooks, but it's a little bit too tall for my liking. I'm going to compare this with a B6 notebook just so you can see what I mean. This is my Muji notebook. It's in the B6 JIS size, this size here. And if you want a comparison to another notebook, this Muji notebook is the same width and the same height as a Stalogy notebook in the B6 size. It's just that this Muji notebook is thinner than the Stalogy B6. So if I compare this B6 Muji with the Chuyu Culture B6, you can see here that there's a big difference in the height, 7 millimeters difference in the height. And there is a slight difference in the width by three millimeters. The The width is, is not a big deal. The height is. There's another view here. 
you want to compare it to the A6 size, which is a lot smaller. You can see how much bigger that this B6 punter is. And I, I like B6 in general, so I'm going to be glad to move out of this into a bigger size. Then lastly, I will have show you a A5 notebook. When I take this cover and close it up like this and line it up with the A5, you can see it's almost exactly the same width and the height of an A5 notebook. It's just maybe a little bit taller than an A5. That's the main con of this notebook. It's not a true B6 size. I do find this quite disappointing because there are three standards here that you could possibly follow and if it's if it's there why not conform to them why make your own size i think that they're what they're doing is they're trying to align it closer to the 32k size which is used in china instead of the B6 size as we know it. Next thing I'd like to talk about is the experience ordering from the Pinkhoi website to get this planner to me and then the shipping that the shipping experience and customer service experience that I had. So I thought I would take show you as I'm talking about that this brochure here and it was sent to me by True You Culture with this planner. It's just the kind of uh, Brochure showing all of their different cover options. So, what was my experience shopping from Pinkoi? I, I I went through Pinkoi instead of the Chuyu Cultures website because Chuyu Cultures website uses Chinese, and I'm not sure that they ship internationally since I'm an international customer. The Pinkoi website is the equivalent of Etsy. So they have lots of small shops and business owners that sell their products on the Pinkoi website. You can when you order from Pinkoi and you order from multiple shops, each shop is going to have to charge you shipping separately. To your culture through Pinkoi, they do ship overseas and they charge a flat rate. When you buy one item, you pay a flat rate. When every subsequent item that you buy from them, you pay another flat rate, which is usually lesser than the first flat rate. When looked at the shipping options and calculated the total shipping, because I wasn't only buying this, I was buying other items as well. I bought this notebook and I bought a ring binder mechanism. I bought some elastics. When you, when you add up those items that I wanted to get and you look at the total shipping, because it's flat rate, it ended up being quite high. And it was higher than the total cost of all of the items that I was buying in that order. I, and on principle, I just couldn't pay more for shipping than I'd pay for the total of the products itself. It was just too high. So luckily, Tinkoi has this feature or option called it's their international forwarding service. Pinkoi has kind of recognized that it's uh, quite a high cost to pay each different shop all of the shipping. So what they do is they pr allow you to have each shop ship not to you directly, but to Pinkoi. They have a warehouse in Taiwan. Each shop can ship to Pinkoi. And since a lot of these shops are in Taiwan, it's shipping from Taiwan to Taiwan and it's faster. When Pinkoi has collected all of your orders from these different shops and you tell them, I want you to send these to me, they will put all of these separate orders into one box and then they will ship it to you. They'll charge you for it. And I, when I was reading about this international forwarding service, I thought, well, I'd like to try it, even though I'm just trying ordering from one shop. Because in the future, I might be ordering from multiple shops. There's always a risk because... Pinkoi doesn't know how much they're going to charge you until they get all your orders and then they give you a quote. They send you a link and then you have to pay that to Pinkoi. Some shops will charge you 
to mail it from from their shop, let's say presumably in Taiwan, to Pinkhoi. This it's not as much high as shipping it internationally, but there might be a charge. In terms of Chuyu culture, what I found out was that if you purchase more than five items from their shop, the shipping to the Pinkhoi warehouse was free. And I happened to order six items. When I, when I did that, I placed the order. Chuyu culture shipped it to me really fast in within one and a half days or one day. And they had tracked shipping to get to Pinkhoi's warehouse in Taiwan. It took about two days. I ordered in early October. And on October 10th, it's Taiwan's national holiday. So everything shuts down, I guess, including the mail service. It's a four day holiday. It spends over four days around that October 10th day. When the I, the package from Chunyu Culture got to the Pinkhoi warehouse, it was before the October 10th public holiday. And then I had to wait the four days or so for the holiday to be over and then they could process all of the orders. But even after waiting those four days and then I uh, think a couple, two or three days late after that, I had already told Pinkhoi to ship out whatever they had to me, even though it was just one order. I told them there was a there's a button on their website that says ship now, and then I pressed the ship now button, so Pinkoi would know this is all the orders you have at the moment. Can you ship it to me? And they they didn't contact me and let me know, so I had to contact them for uh, contact them and ask what's going on with my order. And when I did that, they responded to me in less than a day. And then they gave me a link to tell me how much I had to pay for shipping. And that shipping I had to pay was actually quite high as well. But it wasn't as high as the flat rate shipping from Chuyu Culture to me. I thought, well, that's good. I saved a little bit on shipping and I, I did have to wait here uh, a little bit of a longer time. But I thought, well, I'm saving a little bit of money at least. When, to, when I paid Chuyu Culture for the shipping, they shipped it out via DHL and they did it within a day as well. DHL had tracked shipping and it came in two days. If you've used DHL before, and I've used DHL before, so I'm kind of disappointed in myself for not getting, not remembering this from the last time I got anything that was shipped using DHL. DHL sh charges you additional fees because when they're shipping to me, and this is uh, Canada, they're shipping to Canada, it has to go through customs. The Canadian government will gen generally charge you duties and taxes once something comes across the border. Because DHL is the courier that's shipping it, they have to be the one that declares the customs to the government. The DHL, for this, for this service, they charge you, on top of the shipping fee, they charge you a brokerage fee and a processing fee or transaction fee. The Canadian gover government didn't charge me any duties. The, actually, the duties were zero. Not that they didn't charge me, but the duties were zero. The taxes was the equivalent of the my local sales tax. If I bought something within Canada, I would have paid sales tax on whatever I bought. And if I import something from outside of Canada, then the Canadian government says I have to pay the sales tax on that as well. So I knew that they were going to charge me sales tax and I was fine with that because the, the total sales tax was not big. I What I didn't realize was DHL would charge me the high brokerage fee for handling this customs and the transaction fee. And the total of those two fees were $17 Canadian plus tax. That to me at least, is high, especially in relation to the total cost of this order and the total shipping that I already paid to DHL. It's probably normal, right? But I still wasn't comfortable with this because I felt it was way too high for me. In the future, what I think I'll do is get Chuyu Culture to ship it to me directly and I'll pay their flat rate shipping instead of going through DHL. Of course, that high shipping has nothing to do with Chuyu culture. They shipped it fast. They packaged it quite well. It had it came in bubble wrap. And this planner came in a plastic pouch. 
and each item had their own plastic wrapping so it was a lot of plastic but it's shipping overseas and they shipped it out once they got my order very fast as for Pinko, I, I think maybe it was because of that national holiday that somehow they were slower in processing the ship now request that I had. I had to contact them a second time to let them know I, I, I wanted to, it to ship out. Once they got that second request, then the whole process went quite fast as well. So it's nothing to do with uh, Chuyu culture, it's nothing to do with Pinkoi, and it's nothing to do with the fact that there was a public holiday in between. That's all I have on this review. I hope that it was helpful to you and if you're interested in this planner and you have more questions, I can definitely try to answer them. And that's it. Thanks for watching.